Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this lecture is a part of Advanced uh, Mathematics for Teenagers uh, course presented on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture because there are comments and notes for this lecture um, right uh, on, on the side of the video itself. So the website is a better um, source for watching all these lectures rather than YouTube or any other um, site. All right, so um, this lecture is about one concrete uh, distribution of probabilities. Um, this is a binary distribution and it's called Bernoulli. Uh, I have introduced um, two different binary distributions in the previous lecture. One of them is Bernoulli distribution and another is uh, binomial. So we will talk about Bernoulli distribution today. So let me just remind you that we are talking about um, the space of uh, two elementary events which we have conditionally called success and failure and obvious example is tossing the coin where you have heads and tails so this is uh, all the elementary events we have and let's say that the probabilities of occurring of these two elementary events are p and q where p plus q is equal to 1 obviously now um, so this is basically an abstraction which describes some experiments with two different results now um, on this uh, space of uh, elementary events uh, we have introduced a random variable which is called a Bernoulli random variable, which is equal to 1 on success or 0 on failure. So, this lecture is about how this particular uh, random variable behaves, what's its characteristics. Well, there are basically two major characteristics of any random variable. It's um, expect expectation, mathematical expectation, or mean, or average, if you wish, which is not as a uh, scientific term, as mathematical term, I would say, in this particular case, as mean or um, expectation. So I'll use expectation primarily. So this is one characteristic, and another characteristic uh, is its uh, uh, standard deviation, uh, so these two are basically quantitatively characterize how our uh, random variable behaves. The expectation tells us, well, approximately where is averaging, where this particular random variable is averaging in its values. Um, and uh, standard deviation uh, shows well, how much around that average the values are spread. All right, so, okay, so let's just do this type of calculations for this particular Bernoulli variable. So what we know is that the probability of our random variable to be equal to 1 is equal to p, right? And the probability of this random variable to be equal to 0 is q, where p plus q is equal to 1. There are no other values, just 1 and 0. Now, let me just uh, stop for a second. Now, 1 and 0, well, they actually can be anything. For instance, they can be dollars, or they can be millions of dollars, or they can be anything which, which can be divided into, into pieces. Um, because, well, the average would be obviously between 0 and 1 somewhere. The mean, therefore, the expectation should be between 0 and 1. So it should be divisible, so to speak. This unit of measurement should be divisible. Um, so again, this is of some units of measurements, like dollars, for instance. Now, these P and Q are probabilities. Now, probabilities are actually fractions. These are uh, unitless numbers. So it's a number of successes 
divided by the number of all experiments, right? So it's just numbers. There are no kind of a measurement unit in these P and Q. But 1 and 0, they can be measured in something. Conditionally, for instance, we can assume that this is dollars. Or it can be tons of cent, if you wish, or anything else. All right. So now let me remind you what the expectation actually is. Expectation is weighted average of different values. So if our random variable C takes values x1, x2, etc., xn, with probabilities p1, p2, etc., pn, then the weighted average of these values, x1 times p1 plus x2 times p2 plus etc., plus xn times pn, this is the expectation value. This is a weighted average. So this value takes with this, well, frequency, if you wish, and this value with this frequency, etc. So that's how it is calculated. Now, in our case, there are only two values and two probabilities. So, expectation of our random variable C is equal to its value times its probability plus another value times its probability. Now, this is unitless and this is unitless. These are probabilities. Now, this is something like dollars or tons of sugar or anything else as well as this. Now the result is obviously p, but now this p has the same unit of measurements as 1 and 0. You understand that, right? Because these are unitless, these are fractions. Now the fact that this p and this p have exactly the same value is just a coincidence because this p is a fraction this is a number divided by a number, num number of successes divided by total number of experiments. This P is measured in exactly the same measures as our random variable, which might be just abstract number one, in which case it's an abstract number, but, but it can be a dollar or it can be a ton of sugar, right? So this is our expectation. Well, first of all, intuitively it is understood that if you have two values, 1 and 0, which our variable can take, then obviously its expectation should not be like greater than 1 or, or less than 0. It should be somewhere in between, because there are no other values. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, whatever else. So somewhere the average would be in between. So that's kind of um, obvious. Now, the fact that it's equal to, 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 to P is also understood from statistical um, uh, definition of the probability. Because what does it mean that the probability of the success, success is equal to P? It means if you have a rather large number N of experiments, then P times N would be the number of successes. Right? In which case, uh, yes, and, and Q number N would be failures. Right? So if I will try to average my results, so if these are all the successes where I have the price of 1, and these are all the failures where I have a price of 0, and I will add them. Now, number of experiments is n, so I have to, to get the average value of our variable. I have to divide it by n. Obviously, I will have now this is 0, and n would be out, so I will have only, only p. All right, so that's my expectation. Let's recall it what the uh, standard deviation is. Now, standard deviation is square root of variance. And variance is also something averaging. Now, when I'm talking about variance, I'm talking about averaging using the probabilities as, as the weights. Averaging of deviation of square of the difference between the value of our variable and its uh, mean and its expectation. So our variable has two values, 1 and 0, right? This is the probability and this is the probability. Now, the expectation of this variable, I have just calculated, it's p. By the way, if this is a ton of sugar, this is a ton of sugar, and this is a ton of sugar. 
this is a dollar, then this is a dollar, and this is a dollar, right? So, now, the, uh, the, the deviation is this, in this case, and this, in this case. But I'm talking about square of deviation to basically uh, get rid of the pluses and minuses. And I'm talking about weighted average, which means this is with a probability p and this is with probability q. So that's my variance. Well, let's just simplify this formula. Um, 1 minus p squared is 1 minus 2p plus p squared times p. Now this is p squared times q. q is 1 minus p equals to p minus 2p squared plus p cube plus p squared minus p cube, if I'm a multiply this, equals to p cube is out, so it's p minus, minus 2p squared plus p squared, so it's minus p squared, or p times 1 minus p, or p times q. You see how simple it is? From this rather big formula we get a relatively simple result. So that's my variance. Now variance is, well, it's, it's, it's convenient, but standard deviation, the square root of variance is more convenient, and here is why. Now, what are the units of measurements of this? Well, the same as this p, not this p, this p, and the same as 0 and 1 and this p, right? So this is actually square of the units of measurements of the numbers we are talking about. So if this is a dollar, this is a dollar square. If this is a ton of sugar, this is ton of sugar square, whatever it means, which is not really very convenient, right? So we better um, have the square root of this to, uh, to have the units exactly the same uh, measured as, as the original. So that's why it's square root. All right, so basically that's it. We have calculated the um, expectation. It's P. We calculated the variance, which is this, and we calculated the standard deviation, which is this. Okay, now let me just give you a, a very simple example um, of this particular Bernoulli uh, distribution. And I will not use the coin tossing, which is too easy. Let's use something a little bit more interesting. Let's say you are trying to guess the lottery number. So you have a lottery which is usually called 6 of 49, right? So you have the um, uh, some kind of a ticket with 49 numbers from 1 to 49, you have to guess up to 6 numbers. I mean, you guess 6, but up to 6 actually might be winning, right? Uh, so, and then somebody is choosing 6 numbers from some kind of a um, lottery device, whatever it is. And then there are certain numbers which are the same as um, those pulled from that device, and that's the winning numbers. And that's, there are some numbers you, you, you have chosen which are completely outside of that set, right? So, you might win 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 numbers, okay? So, let's basically simplify the story. Let's say if you win, uh, if you have guessed correctly, uh, 4, 5, or 6, or 6 numbers, you win. This is a success. If 0, 1, 2, or 3, this is failure. Now, in one of the previous lectures, where I was actually analyzing what the probability is all about, I have calculated the probabilities of uh, uh, hitting exactly a certain number of uh, numbers from 0 to 6, whatever. So if you will add the probabilities uh, for these, you will get something like 
one thousandths. So with a probability of one thousandths, you guess four or more numbers out of six. Okay? And with probability of 0 0.999, you fail to basically, uh, in, in, in this experiment, you, you have a failure. So we are talking about winning or losing, success or failure, uh, with a probability of success equals to 1,000 and the probability of um, losing equals to 0 0.999 thousand, right? So it's a really very kind of a losing game, if you wish. Now, you probably um, want to play this game in such a way that it would equalize your um, winning, which means that in this particular case, the winning should be equal to one, but let's just have a unit of measurements sufficient enough to compensate the small probability. Let's say in thousands of dollars. So you win one thousand dollar in case you win. And if, in case you, you lose, uh, you uh, don't get anything. Also thousand dollars. Right? So basically it's the winning game for you. Either you win or you don't lose. That's okay. But in our case, uh, this is just a, 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 some kind of educational example. So let's just calculate expectation and, um, and the standard deviation of this Bernoulli trials. All right. So what's the um, expectation? Okay, let me go back here. That's what we have derived before, right? So, um, the expectation of this game is equal to 0 0.001, but now I have to in thousands of dollars, which is equal to $1 right so on average in this game you will win <coughs> a dollar so in one thousands average one thousands of cases you win a thousand dollars so which means that in every game on average you will get you, you will get a dollar so that does make sense right so we are averaging right so we are averaging we, we play thousands and thousands of games on, and on, on average, every one thousandth of that number, we are winning a thousand dollars. So that's approximately a dollar per game. That's that's okay. That's kind of obvious and intuitively, uh, you feel that this is the right the right answer. Now let's talk about standard deviation sigma. Well, that's in our case, it's square root of 0 0.001 times 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.999. That's what it is. And it's equal to, well, I calculated before, approximately, that's what it is. Am I right? Well, this is almost 1, so it doesn't really matter. But if you will multiply 32,000 by 32,000, um, you will get approximately, well, a little bit less than a thousand over a million. So yeah, it's about a thousand. Now again, this is in thousands of dollars. Which means, if it's in thousands of dollars, it's approximately, by the way, this is approximately, it's not equal, um, about thirty-two dollars, right? That's an interesting point, you see. The average is one dollar that's your expectation so average per game so if you play million of uh, millions of games then an average you will be getting a one dollar from it but the standard deviation is rather large i mean considering you have an average per game one dollar it means that average deviation from this dollar 
can be really substantial if the average deviation is, is 32. Now you can have zero sometimes. Uh, in, actually, in many, many cases you will have zero. And in uh, certain cases you will get certain, you know, large sum of, uh, large winning sum. And if you will average this deviation from one to the left, to the zero, or to the right, to some big number, and it's a weighted average actually, you will get something like 32. So that actually gives you an idea that your winning can be, well, significantly different from from your average. Well, basically that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about as far as Bernoulli distribution. Um, you can just, yourself, you can uh, address this uh, coin tossing, which is a very easy thing. P and Q equal both to one half, and obviously the averages expectation is one half, and, uh, and the standard deviation is also would be square root of one half times one half, which is one half. Well, that's an easy case. In any case, um, I suggest you to read the comments, the notes to this lecture. It's like a textbook reading, basically. Um, just to familiarize with, uh, y yourself more, maybe, with terminology and, uh, and basically ideas of how to calculate um, the expectation and, uh, and the standard deviation. Um, so, that's it. Thanks very much, and good luck.